So you use the high energy lead and like it shows you do the bright keys. The audio that's playing, you should be able to see where the keys are being clicked. But this is the main drive for the whole song. You use this for just about everything that you do. Beats per minute, 132, so that helps you stay on time with your metronome. But yeah. So like I showed in the previous video, um, this song is, is like I took all the separate parts of it and I put them, recorded them. There are, most of them are on keys actually. And I split the song into sections. You can either do that or if you're really, really, really good, you can just mess with the length of it. I split it into sections. But so you have to have the lead for that pluck sound that goes along with the song. And then the synthetic bass house. Let me show you the beat. This this beat is actually not that hard. And when you have the sequencer, it makes it a lot easier. So it's, I think it's supposed to have a bass in it. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, like that. Something like that. But so that's your main drive throughout actually the whole song the sub bass is just i'm just about sure but it adds background to it let me turn off that sustain then just put the background to it. the trill riser hmm. Since it, it's made to do that, you just go. And hold it down. So it does it all by itself. The warm synth pad, you may not be able to hear this, but throughout the whole song, it's holding that the whole time. And actually, it can be a different sound. I couldn't find it from my previous one, my previous recording. But you hold it down. Make sure that this is on. So after that, you go into the chorus, and the chorus is not a whole lot different, except for I added these leads in here, and these give it that sound. Single amount. It's three different pitches of them. Like I play them in different places, so it sounds fuller. Here's really cool. It's the high energy lead, but what you take is instead of holding it and poking it or like that, you swipe up the key. Which makes it do that wobble. Pretty nice. The bending lead. This is probably this is a lot more complex than the rest of that. So. I'm how it goes. Just. You get the point. I did add on the end right here for the drums. I think it's palm like snare. Yeah, I was having fun right there. So then this will go into the verse 2. Verse 2 doesn't really have anything different from verse 1. Except for I think... Yeah, nothing really different from verse 1. It's all the same. Just about... Add whatever you want to if you think it sounds better. And then this is the part that goes... Like, before the chorus. I'm not very... I'm not as good with music as I should be. I don't, well, yes, I am good with music. Never mind. But I don't know what come what you would call that between the chorus, the verse and the chorus. It's not a bridge. Um, I can't think straight right now. <laughs> but instead of holding the bass, you tap it. And it sounds good.
sometimes on a live it has this. But same beat going out. But I took the Bluebird drum kit. And it's got a sequencer for it. And it's just... Uh, that those two basses. Two snare hits and the... So like I can play it right here. But yeah, that is a live Hillsong Young and Free made on GarageBand. And those of you who are watching, if you figure out a better way to do some of this stuff, please comment and let me know. <laughs> Because this is probably about as good as I've gotten so far. But yeah, it's a really, really fun song to play. I need to name it. But thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. This is it's not that hard. It's pretty easy. Fun to play. So yeah.